Hi guys, this is Thompson here, and today we're going to go over percent yield. Okay, still going on with our stoichiometry. All right, so what is percent yield? It's how much you've actually recovered in a lab compared to what you theoretically could have obtained in that lab. Um, and the theoretically part is always calculated by doing some stoichiometry. So here's our equation. Percent yield is actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. The actual yield part of this comes from the lab, or it had to be given to you in the problem and stated so-and-so obtained this amount of product. It's always a product. And then the theoretical yield is calculated. So you could take a reactant and calculate how much product you have to have. There's stoichiometry that's involved to do this. And you always want to take it to grams of whatever product you need. Okay. So there's our equation again. Um, here's our first example. We have 45.8 grams of potassium carbonate, and they're reacted with hydrochloric acid. Calculate the percent yield if 46.3 grams of potassium chloride are produced. Here's the balanced chemical equation. Let's go ahead and solve. So what are we given here? We've given a lot of information. Um, we're given a couple things in terms of a reactant and a couple things in terms of a product. So let's see, for the given, we've got 45.8 grams of potassium carbonate. If I look at the balanced equation, this is on the left side, this is a reactant. Okay. It's important to note that it's a reactant. So it's not something that's going to go into the percent yield calculation because it hasn't been yielded, it hasn't been produced, it's reactant. And then we also have a number here. It says 46.3 grams of potassium chloride are produced. Here we have a product. And so this can go into the percent yield problem. Um, this would be considered the actual yield because this is how much was produced in that lab setting. We want to know what is the percent yield. But in order to do that, we have to actually figure out what's the theoretical yield. So in that percent yield equals actual over theoretical, we need the actual yield, which is 46.3. We also need a theoretical yield to find percent yield. And what is that yield? Well, it's potassium chloride. How do I know it's potassium chloride? There are three products there. There's potassium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Um, I know that I'm looking for potassium chloride because the actual yield that they gave me is in terms of potassium chloride. And then the last thing, in order to figure out the theoretical yield, I need the grams of the product, potassium chloride, the thing that they gave me as the actual, that's the grams that I need for the theoretical. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's calculate the theoretical yield. Theoretical yield would be a mass-to-mass -mass problem, and I'm going from, in terms of these givens here, I'm going from grams of potassium carbonate, okay, to grams of potassium chloride. Mass to mass problems going from the reactant to the product that I'm looking for. So let's do that. Um, I figured out the molar mass of potassium carbonate, it's 138.21. I need the mole ratio, remember that's moles of the unknown over the moles of the given. And then the last step would be to use the molar mass of the new substance, which is potassium chloride, which is 74.55 grams if you add one potassium and one chlorine. Cancel my units, can't forget to do that. And round three significant figures based on that given being three sig figs and the rest being either unlimited or more. All right, so that's 49.4 grams of potassium chloride. This is my theoretical yield. This is the maximum amount of product that I could obtain during this lab by calculating um, using the amount of potassium carbonate, the reactant that I started. Then I need to calculate the percent yield, which this part's the easier part. After you have the theoretical, you just take the actual, which we identified in the beginning as being 46.3 grams of potassium chloride. Remember, that is how much was actually produced in the lab. And it's always a product. And then the bottom one is the calculated one, the theoretical.
times 100, and I get 93.7%. That has three significant figures based on these both having three significant figures. All right. A note here, if you have a mass of two reactants and you need to figure out the theoretical yield, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take the limiting reactant as the one that gives you the theoretical yield. So remember the limiting problems. You chose between those last two numbers to see which one is the mass of the product produced. And that was the one that was given by the limiting reactant. So to make that clear, let's just go over this. This is what we've already done, okay, in the last set of notes. So you don't need to write it down. Um, remember, we figured out aluminum and chlorine. We figured out the mass of each one of the products, or of aluminum chloride. Aluminum gave me this amount. Chlorine gave me this amount. So I determined that this was the mass of the product because it was the smallest number, which is the most amount of product I could make. Okay, so if I were doing a percent yield problem, I would use this. Let me see. Get myself out of the way here. Um, we would use that number as my theoretical yield. So you might want to make a note on the notes from the other day that that would be my theoretical yield, the mass of the product. So you'll have some problems where you have to do all of this. There's so many givens where you have um, to figure out which one's the limiting, which one's the excess, how much excess reactant remains, and what's the percent yield. So hopefully we have enough time to do enough practice problems. If not, you might want to check out some other videos. I can leave you some links on my website.